So let's look at the following example in which we're going to calculate the net electric field. Two stationary point charges are arranged as shown in the following diagram. So we have point charge 1 and point charge 2. The charge on point charge 1 is negative 20 microcoulombs. The charge on point charge 2 is positive 40 microcoulombs. So we'd like to calculate the net electric field at point A. The distance from point A to point charge 1 is 30 centimeters. The distance from point a to point charge 2 is 10 centimeters and the distance between these two charges is given to be 20 centimeters. Now if we draw a line that bisects we'll see that this section becomes 15 centimeters and this section becomes 5 centimeters. Now we have two right triangles. We're going to use these right triangles to calculate the angle in just a moment. So, let's begin by looking at the free body diagram for all the electric fields acting at point A. So, because we have two point charges, we'll have two electric fields. Let's call electric field E1 as the electric field as a result of point charge 1. Now, it will point beginning at point A directly at point charge 1. And that's because this has a negative charge. Now, we'll call electric field vector E2 as the electric field as a result of point charge 2. Now, because this has a positive charge, this electric field will point directly away from point charge 2 as shown in the following free body diagram. Now, angle theta 1 is the angle vector E1 makes with respect to our x-axis. And angle theta 2 is the angle that this vector makes with respect to the x-axis. So let's go back to our diagram here. We have two right triangles. And notice, angle theta 1 is angle theta 1 in this right triangle. And angle theta 2 is this angle in this right triangle. So we have two right triangles we can use our trig functions. So, cosine of angle theta 1 is equal to our adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So, cosine theta 1 is equal to 15 divided by 30 and that means our angle is 60. The same exact thing can be done for this angle theta 2. Cosine of the angle theta 2 is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So, we get the same exact angle for theta 2. These two angles are equal. They're 60 degrees. Now, we can use this angle and our equation for our electric field to calculate the net electric field. So we have to take the sum of the electric fields along the x-axis and along the y-axis and then we use this equation. So let's begin by calculating the net sum of our electric fields along our x-axis. So we point the or we choose going this way along the x-axis to be positive. So that means both of our electric fields will be positive. So cosine of the angle theta 1 multiplied by E1 plus cosine of the angle theta 2 multiplied by E2. So these are the x component vectors of these two respective vectors. So, notice these two angles are the same, so we can bring the constant out, and that's exactly what we do. Now, recall what our equation for E1, E2 is. So, E1 becomes K multiplied by Q1, this quantity, divided by D1 squared, where D1 is the distance between A and point charge 1. Likewise, this becomes K multiplied by Q2, divided by D2 squared, where Q2 is the charge given by this quantity and d2 is this distance here. So we plug in our known values. Our k is a constant. It's equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons multiplied by meter squared divided by coulomb squared. Now we have to convert microcoulombs to coulombs by multiplying these two quantities by 1 times 10 to negative 6. That's exactly what we do. And finally, we have to convert centimeters to meters by dividing each one of these by 100. So we have 0.3 meters 
meters squared and 0.1 meters squared. So we take the sum, we multiply by cosine 60, which is 0.5, and we get 1.898 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb is the sum of the electric field acting along the x-axis. Now, the same exact is done for the y-axis, but instead of using cosines, we're using sines now because sine will give us the y component. So, we have the y component for vector E1 and the y component for vector E2. Notice we choose going up to be positive and going downward to be negative. So, this component becomes positive and this becomes negative. So, once again, our angles are the same, so we take our common term out. That's exactly what we do. And we replace E1 and E2 with the following two equations. So, we multiply, we subtract, we multiply by sine 60, and we get negative 2.941 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. So the negative simply means it points in the opposite direction of the chosen positive. So it will point downward. The net force along the y or the net electric field along the y axis will point downward. Finally, we plug in our values into the following equation. The net electric field is equal to the square root of the square of the sums as shown. We plug in our values, we plug that into the calculator and we get a net electric field of 3.5 times 10 to the 7 newtons.